Ruski Ed here with a lesson about body parts. Inspect the list of focus words for this lesson during the intro song, following which the lesson will commence. The Russian language is complicated. Some people love it and some just hate it. If learning Russian is hurting your head, then the best cure known is Ruski Ed. They say that the thigh bone is connected to the hip bone, and you could say this line in Russian in either of two ways. On the one hand, you could say, Bedrenaya kost, soya denina satazavai kostu. And on the other hand, you could say, Bedrenaya kost, prekreplayatsia katazavai kosti. But enough about thigh bones and hip bones, there are plenty more body parts to discuss, beginning with the neck. The Russian word for neck is shea, and most of us have had stiff necks before. One word for stiff is animali, and another word that could be used is zatekats, which means to become stiff in this context. Alternately, pavoratshevatsya means to turn or swing, and placing a negation in front of this word would basically get across the idea that one's neck is stiff. And so the sentence, he said that his neck is stiff, could be phrased in any of the following ways. On skazal sto onivo shea zatikla. On skazal sto onivo animala shea. And on skazal sto onivo shea ni pavoratshevatsya. Next up, we have a sentence about the elbow, and the Russian word for elbow is lokats. The sample sentences for lokats go like this. U nio tatui rovka chut vishi loktya. And u nio tatushka chut vishi loktya. Both mean she has a tattoo above her elbow. Up next, we have a sentence about the eyebrows. Three words that will appear in the sample sentence include plamya means flame, spalitz means singe, and brov means eyebrow. Throwing these words into a sentence, we get Plamya spalila evo brof, which means the flame burned off one of his eyebrows. By the way, if the eyebrow is not entirely burnt off, we might say Plamya apalila evo brof. Moving along, we have a sentence about the scalp. Although two Russian terms for scalp include Koja golowi and scalp, neither of these words will be used in a sample sentence. Instead, we'll talk about being bald. The Russian word for bald is lisi, and nagala means all of someone's hair. Further, britsya means to shave, and the perfective form is pabritsya. Utilizing these words, we could say, on pabritsya nalisa, and on pabritsya nagala. Finally, we have a sentence about fingernails. Actually, the Russian word nagats refers to a nail of the fingers or the toes, and some of the forms of nagats include nagtya, nagtu, nagtyam, nagtyami, and nagtyach. In any case, the sentences for nagats include on pabravnevo svoi nagti, on pad strigal svoi nagti, and on pad rizal svoi nagti, all of which mean he was trimming his fingernails. The focus words for this lesson include anameli means stiff, lakats means elbow, brof means eyebrow, brizia means to shave, and nagats means fingernail. Broski Ed, signing out now, just good on ya! This lesson's over, finished and done. You'll know more Russian and have some fun. So now to check your memory, it would be best to go to the website and take the test.